my conventions in Fourscore, why I established them, and uh, welcome to libraries. All right, so my convention, if I click, if I tap on uh, the title here and then tap on the uh, very top title, then it takes me down to this menu. My convention is uh, that I start with the title, I start with the composer's name, and then space, hyphen, space, and then the title of the piece. Uh, I also have the composer's name underneath there with the dates. Uh, genre, I use Renaissance, Baroque, um, Modern, Jazz, uh, Renaissance, or whatever, like that. And then instruments, I say the number of instruments, and then if I know what the combination of instruments is, I can put that afterwards. So, for example, in this piece, uh, let's just take a quick look, and this looks like it is two altos, or uh, I think this would be most suitably played on two altos. So uh, I am going to, once this calendar item goes away, I'm going to click there, click there, and sorry, you can't see where I'm clicking. You'll have to just guess. And uh, because I know this is two altos, I'm going to do a comma to make this a separate item. Caps lock, A, A. Uh, if it could be played on, on Sopranos as well, then I could do another comma and add uh, S, A. So I just do S for Soprano, A for Alto, and these are recorders, of course. If you have other instruments that you're using, you could specify them here, being sure that you put a comma between each one. My convention is just A for Alto, B for Bass, G for Great Bass, and like that. Um, and uh, then um, don't worry about uh, rating or difficulty um, labels. You can put in something that is relevant for you. And um, go away, email. And then the reason that I do the composer's name there, let me just show you. If I click, tap somewhere else on the screen, and if I go to the half note icon on the upper left, uh, I am in composer. But let's say that I want to find all of my duets. So I'm going to type I'm going to tap on instruments and scroll up to the top, and I have one and two, one, uh, one, one instrument, one in continuo, two instruments, two in continuo, three, four, four in continuo, five, six, etc. And then I have uh, one alto, two altos, alto, two altos in continuo, uh, three altos, etc. But I want to see my duets, so I'm going to tap on two, and. Now I've got all these in here. Now if I had um, only put the title in, then this would be sorted by title. And it, as it is, it's sorted by composer because I started with the composer. Now of course the composer's name is listed underneath, but notice that the options for sorting here are uh, up at the top title. I can do newest, and so it'll show the last thing I added. I can do rating, um, or I can do difficulty time, or key. But notice that composer is not listed there. Now, typically, if I'm looking for a duet, the next thing that I want to find is not necessarily the title of the piece, but more likely the composer. So if I'm looking for pieces by um, Gibbons, I'll tap the G on the right side, and that takes me into the Gs, and I can find Gibbons. Notice the one in blue is the one that's currently um, displayed. And um, so, or I can look for ESOC now, I can, I can select that piece, and um, I tap up on the upper left again, takes you back to there. So this was the reason why I started with the composer's name, and it's also why I put the number of instruments in there. Now, since I started this, I had no one to show me the, the, um, how to use this application, so uh, this was what I figured out was the best thing to do. However, since then, I have discovered if I tap on uh, where it says library here, uh, go back to composer just for organization's sake. But if I tap again on library in the upper left, then it has, uh, right now I'm in all libraries, and if you haven't created any new libraries, then that's all you have there. But here's the, mag the magnificent thing about libraries. I can, type the, I can tap the plus sign on the top of that and create a new library. I'm going to cancel that because I don't need to create a new one. And then I can put pieces in that library. Now, everything will be in all libraries, but in addition, 
I have a library that is Duet. See about halfway down the screen here, Duet. And um, so in there, if I tap on the upper left corner, uh, I'm now noticed that in blue on the upper left, it says Duet. That's the library I'm in. And so all these pieces are duets. These are all two part pieces. And they are, because I'm in the composer sort, I am looking at the composers for two part pieces. Now, I didn't know to do that when I started. So um, it's really not necessary to start with composer, but, uh, but I, I started doing it that way, and so I'm continuing to do it that way. But anyway, so uh, this is the, the best method of doing this, is to create libraries for your various um, categories. And so, for example, I have a category for the Overmountain Recorder Consort, and, which is uh, four people, and then I have another category for Overmountain Trios. And I play in another group called the Catbirds, and so I have a category for that. And Music Antigua, another group. I have a category for printed. These are ones where I actually have uh, printed out scores in a binder so that if I'm playing with a group of people who do not have four score, I can select from this list, and uh, uh, these are pieces that we would be able to play. So, and I have quartet, trio, duet, solo. Notice that uh, I do not use... Um, uh, plurals in here because uh, you don't want to have one category that's quartets and another one that's quartet and to save the complication with that in um, in all these things I simply do singular in everything except all libraries which uh, I didn't create so but notice that I have other categories here you can put a piece into more than one category more than one uh, library sorry uh, so I have the number of parts quartet trio solo etc down here quintet and, but then I also have Sonata with Realized Bass, Sonata without Realized Bass, and I have a Technique category, I have a Collection, I keep saying Category, Library. Now I've also done a lot of research into various uh, collections, this time I mean collection, that were done over the years, and here's the Mellon Chansonnier uh, that was done in around 1470, so if I tap on that, these are all pieces from that. And if I tap back on the title up at the top there, and back here, Scroll down with my finger, and um, uh, the uh, Chansonnier de Copenhague, the Glogauer Leader Book, uh, Bologna MSQ 16, the Ad Hecaton, uh, Canti B, which is part of the Ad Hecaton, Canti C is also part of that, uh, Motetti uh, Numero Trentare, or whatever. Um, these are all uh, cata uh, uh, catalogs that I have uh, in put into. Um, Four scores. So, for example, if I look at the Dow Part Books, uh, these are all pieces from the Dow Part Books. Uh, there are 70 items. You can see up at the top under all scores. Tap again on Dow Part Book. I also have a quintet and uh, uh, all over down here. Um, publications by London Pro Musica is another category I have. So these are all these are all different libraries. So if I am in, for example, the uh, Overmountain Trio library, I can only see pieces that are in that library. But if I go back to, let's see, it's, I, I'm, I'm in Das Lang. Uh, if I tap up on the top, and then again on the top here, it brings it, this up. And then down here, um, no, she's not going to work because this is a bookmark, so never mind that. I, we'll talk about bookmarks some other time. So let's just go to the Arcadelt here and tap the top, tap the top. And I'm back in here now. If you look at the middle of the screen here, it's got layout, set lists audio, MIDI, and libraries. Tap on libraries, and um, assuming that you have created the library in the uh, screen I showed you a moment ago, you can uh, check what libraries that you want to put it in. This, for example, is in the Overmountain Trio library, Catbirds library, printed, and trio. It's in all of those libraries. It is not in the solo library. It's not in the Sonata with Realized Bass library. If I wanted it in this one, I just tap there, and it goes into that library. Tap again to take it out. And so libraries are incredibly useful. Um, but in addition, I, I think that having the, tap there again, having the instruments category, now notice here it has ATB. This is a trio for alto tenor bass. Uh, that having that category for instruments, in addition to having the trio um, library, is also useful because sometimes you want to be in a particular library, let's say, I want to be in the, um, oh, let's say the, 
Mellon Chansonnier library, but I want to see which what instrumentation there is in here. So I can see that there are 50 trios and four quartets, and some of them have been subdivided into um, the, what what instrumentation they are specifically. But so I can now tap on the uh, three to see all of the trios in that library. So it's still useful to have that. The convention of including of starting with the composer's name in the title is really uh, once I discovered libraries, it, that really isn't necessary. But since I have so many pieces in here with that, I am not going to go back and un and change all of that. If I go back to all libraries and all scores. I've got two thousand one hundred eleven items in here. Um, and so I'm not going to go back and change all those. But um, as I said, it's really not necessary to do that. I hope that has been useful.